I'm doing it. Ready? Greetings, I'm Rob Chappers. And I'm the captain. And we have the very massive, fortunate fortune to be born in England and living here in Anderton, Stock Hedge, UK, and Guildford. Were you and we born have. In England? I thought you were yeah. born in Holland. I was born in England, but I was raised in Holland. Ah. Uh, a bit of both to make bit me better. Both. Um, so, Fender, Paramount Series Acoustic Guitars. Let's let's just wind the clock back. So I thought it was a Fendi, because if you look at the headstock, it looks a little bit Fendi. I like that. Anyway, we're going to talk about that in a minute. So. If you, like me, first came across kind of Fender acoustics, uh, probably in the 80s or around about that time, they had, um, they were absolutely known as an electric guitar manufacturer and they kind of, when they built acoustic guitars, quite often what would happen is they'd find a factory that was already building acoustic guitars anyway and they'd go, have you got a nice dreadnought that we can stick our name on and off, you know. And, you know, lots and lots of guitar manufacturers uh, have done that in the past and, and still do to this day. Mm. But I don't know, about 10 years ago, maybe a bit more, 10, 12 years ago, Fender started to take their acoustic guitar line much, much more seriously. Um, so with ranges like CD and CF uh, and Kingman's and, and all those kind of stuff, they really started going, look, we should really kind of design these acoustics in the same way that we design our electric guitars. So, Make you know, it more really, Fender. Yeah, really Bring understand kind of what's in it and not just go to the factory and yeah. take whatever. So Paramount is kind of the, the latest uh, um, range to come from Fender, but it's designed to really sit at the sort of the premium end of what can be achieved on a, a Far Eastern made guitar. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's two really cool things about um, the Paramount series, and, and at the moment there, Rob, Rob's holding the the triple O, I'm holding the parlour size one. There's a dreadnought to show you in a minute, and that's that they are all solid timber guitars. Mm. So solid Sitka tops. Sitka spruce. Yep, Sitka spruce tops. Um, very thin, uh, completely redesigned. Well, not redesigned, but uh, tuned bracing. So they've re they've really taken the X bracing style, but you know, scalloped it and really got it kind of so that it allows the top to vibrate as, as much as possible. It's unique bracing for each body shape uh, to again to, to accentuate all the goodness. And then typically what you won't find on um, a lot of more affordable Far Eastern made acoustic guitars is the back and the sides are now made of solid timbers. So on the standard series, a mahogany, beautiful mahogany. Uh, is this mahogany as well? No, that's you've got the deluxe. Because it looks beautiful. So you've got East Indian rosewood. Ooh. Flip that. Flip, rotate, reverse. Without touching the microphones before um, beer kills me. So, one super quick way to find out what you know whether you're looking at a, a standard or a deluxe series Paramount is look at its ass. And if it looks, <laughs> it looks like that, it's deluxe. And if it looks like that, it's standard. To be fair, they both look absolutely yeah. stunning. And so, I love this little attention to detail with the checkerboard around well, the so side. That, so the solid timbers. So when we talk about design, Forget 
aesthetics. We're talking about a dovetail neck join. We're talking about uh, a super thin lacquer to really allow the, the top to vibrate. Um, you know, very much a kind of a an acoustic guitar player's acoustic, if mm. that makes sense. <laughs> And then aesthetically, what they've done, which I really rather like, is drawn upon lots of vintage aspects. So, you know, checkerboard inlays, and uh, I've never seen this logo before, but I'm reliably informed this is the- It's the original Fender original logo. Fender because logo. I saw it from a corner and I was like, it mm. looks like it says Fendi. Yeah. And I, and I was really confused. It didn't look yeah. like the original logo. So but... apparently this hasn't been used since the 40s. R so right. I, we're, we're talking like, seriously, uh, I, I'm pointing this completely off camera. Maybe That's fine. You know what I'll do is, even though you're doing that, I'll get a close up close anyway. Up. And I'm also um, going to pretend that I have your finger and put a finger in the shot <laughs> so that they think it's your finger. And a um, cloud scratch play. Yeah, so lots of really cool things. I mean, and the shapes, you know, I mean, the, a pile of shape is, is, a, is a beautiful vintage thing. You've Secret got, you've Fender got... Man, is this made of ebony or is this... Yeah. It is ebony. I thought so. I could smell it was ebony from here. Thank you, Secret Fender Man. <laughs> Very much sort of vintage style open tuners. Even the inlay on the on the uh, the headstock on the standard series and it repeats itself uh, down the, the fretboard on the deluxe series is taken from a, a 60s kind of concert tone bluegrass uh, range that Fender had. So mm. stunning, stunning tones. Let me give you some of my stunning tones and then Lee can give you some of his stunning tones. Yes. <laughs> to say play some finger pickery stuff not do not play that tune it's finger picking it's what you asked me to do <laughs> um, so the, re the reason i ask you to do finger picking is that actually the the uh the triple o and the parlor size it's got a lot of brightness to it are well they're wider fretboards yeah, yeah so they're wider fretboards and the smaller the smaller surface area of the top at, cu coupled with the kind of the wider fretboard makes it a more delicate you know you you don't have to actually hit the strings quite yeah, yeah, so yeah. hard to get everything to really resonate. Okay, so. so. feeling guitar, reassuringly solid and well made, and there's a great, great built-in feature that we can show them in a minute. Right, well let me just cover the rest of the, um, so in terms of, so we, we talked about three different shapes, and again we'll pick all those up. Two different series, so a standard series, which is only available in natural, so you can have the standard Parlor, standard uh, Triple O, or standard Dreadnought, just be available in natural, and we'll all have a mahogany back and sides, mm. like this. Or if you jump up to natural, uh, sorry, natural. If you jump up to deluxe, uh, you can have two color choices. So you can have the, the pretty natural color that Rob's got, or a beautiful sunburst color like this one. Um, and they will all have the Indian rosewood back and sides. <coughs> Obviously the sunburst sounds warmer because it's a darker looking wood. So that's a great thing to yes. look out for. Um, the parlor, this is probably the oldest shape in the range. You know, this goes way back uh, to, to the sort of days when ladies would play acoustic guitars in the parlour. 
and they weren't designed for really live performance or anything like that. They were very much designed for sort of, you know, small, quiet background music and, you know, keeping your lord amused. Um, <laughs> but they make great, they make great sort of late night sofa guitars, you know. Yeah. enough shelf room to put the chicken and the pizza <laughs> while you're watching your favourite Netflix programme. So, tell them about the electronics then, Rob. Well, it's got electronics, but what I was going to mention is that it's got this wicked built-in tuner, which I think we should do a, a sweep over and they can see it right now. And all you do is you press down on the little tuning fork, which you'll see with my finger doing on a second camera, actually a fourth camera, and it lights up and it looks absolutely awesome. Uh, to my mind, it's the best built-in acoustic guitar tuner so far. Made by Fishman. Yep. Made by Fishman, made specifically by Fishman. four Fender guitars, and it's brilliant. So the just gather, you know, going on from there, what Fender did was they approached Fishman, who are you know arguably the world's best-known acoustic guitar pickup manufacturer, um, and they said, look. We need to design a, a discrete system. So we've very much sort of pinched an idea from Taylor here and we've got these nice little discrete um, tone and volume controls here. Uh, that, so there's no big chunky preamp into the side of the guitar. The big one in the middle is volume and the two either side are treble and bass. Um, the preamp, which is internal in the guitar, you can maybe again with a sweep over, you can kind of see the electronics just inside here. Each preamp is voiced differently for the shape of the guitar. So mm. the parlor shape has a certain voice to again keep that parlor vibe to it. The dreadnought has a different voice and, and the triple O mm. has a different voice. And what I like is that the tone controls are notched. Yeah. So if you're on the fly, you can kind of feel where center is, yeah. which is a really useful but practical even, thing. There's even, get this as well, pro feature, pro gigging feature. The other, the, the button on the other side to the tuner, the one Brings that looks like a, a zero with a, with a strike through it, that's your phase switch. So if you're playing at a gig and you're, for whatever reason, finding you've got oh, some feedback, feedback problems oh, okay. or there's just something not right with your sound, uh, you can reverse the phase uh, of the guitar, which uh, often helps. It looks like it divides move. by zero. That's what it is, it removes <laughs> feedback. <laughs> right. Little stuff again that you you might like the 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 strap button has been designed to sit very much in a place where electric guitar players will find it comfortable to be rather than perhaps on the back of the heel joint or mm. having to use maybe a boot lace through the you know behind the nut here. So again, the, the, it sits very much like a you know electric guitar kind uh -huh. of vibe when you put the strap. How does on. yours sound, Lee? So yeah, mine is probably the smallest. Well, I was kind of doing it. The smallest size, and of course, with the, the mahogany back and sides as well, it can have a slightly kind of more uh, woody kind of mid-range kind of tone. The nice thing on rosewood is it gives that sort of sort of scooped smiley face, you know, a little bit more bottom end, a little bit more uh, brightness, not quite so much in the mid-range. as well throughout this video and I guess the sound and videoing editing people will have to annotate this accordingly but we are miking up with these rather excellent pencil microphones here and using electromelodic outputs uh, so I don't know what you're hearing is the truth you're either hearing the mic or you're hearing the pickup or you're perhaps hearing a blend of the two but I'm sure the screen will annotate and be clear and tell you it will be um, so that's a kind of cool feature so if you're playing live you'd probably just use the, the piazza output if you're in the studio recording you'd probably do what we're doing which is a blend of both and then you know in your edit you can you can just blend that to give you the bestest tone let's move on so we've swapped over to the Dreadnoughts. I've got the standard series Dreadnought here. Rob's got the Deluxe. So I guess the first thing to try and show you is purely the tonal difference in the two. So if we play a big, yeah, set everything up. Yeah, I'm just centralizing my Cent tonal centralize. situation. Uh, let's play a big E chord. <laughs> big difference in the character of the guitars there. Yeah, what kind of pick are you using? Uh, a gravity, okay, actually so a Rob just Chapman checking. gravity pick. So am I've I. you got exactly the pick just, that you've just got. Just making sure we're using the same pick yeah. as well. That's uh, but you can hear 
don't know if there's a big volume difference between the two. I think some people, again, you might perceive the Rosewood one to be slightly louder because it's got more powerful sort of bass end on it, but it's probably not that different. Uh, there's not that much difference in the volume. It's just the character of the tone sure. that's very different. So. I love the Dreadnought and why I think it's been copied so many times is because, you know, you can go from, you know, that delicate, you know, it still moves and then you can go. Yeah. You know, and it'll fill a room. There's a big dynamic range yeah. with, with the instrument because it's such a, a mighty, wieldy, dreadful it beast. It is, yeah. And it doesn't, I think if you go much bigger than a Dreadnought, um, what you get, it just becomes overwhelmingly bassy. Uh, Would and you loses. call a bigger dreadnought a dread dreadnought? A, a super jumbo. A dread one. Uh, a, a mega dread. <laughs> a, 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 a Bob Marley. No, what do you call it? Like a something with mega dreads. No, no, no it's um, yeah. So like a, a Gibson J two hundred, which is you know, it's just it's a, a big powerful guy. Like, you know, a barbecue doesn't, doesn't really you know you very you, you very rarely see anybody you know doing little finger picking -y things on a J200, you know, it's, it's all about Now we're going to get chords. the comment section action yeah. packed full of artists that going, use the J200. I use a J200 for, for a little time. finger picking. Um, so that's the kind of the range really. I, I, there's there's, um, nice. there's how much to not like. How much? The standard series is about 500 pounds and the deluxe Ooh. series is about 600 pounds. Ah. All the shapes are the same price. There's no surcharge for the color or anything like that. So uh, they all come with a rather splendid, would you hold that for me? I shall do so. A rather splendid hard case emblazoned with the word Fender Paramount just on this top side here. So a proper wooden hard case for free. Uh, would you like to look inside? I would do. Would you? Mind your microphone, Lee. I will. Oh, hang on, there must be another. There's another doodah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! Uh, there you are. So that just looks fluffy and black inside. And what? Uh, what uh, could be better than a fluffy black thing? <laughs> what, you mean like, like a, a Labrador? Labrador. Yeah, yes, good, absolutely. Let's keep it on it, track for bring the Bring it to Labrador. Yeah. Um, hang on, there's more, there's more latches I, I remember. Uh, so, there we are. Let's jam out, Mr Chapman. All right, bro. What are we playing? I'm playing. the Fender Paramount series. Um, I love them. I love everything, to be honest with you. I, I, if I was buying an acoustic guitar, I would want something that was vintage style. You know what, they're Christmas, with, aren't they? They're deep, crisp and yes, even. Yes, deep, crisp and even. I'd yeah. want something with solid timbers. You know, I'd want something with a cool name on the headstock. Mm. In a bit of heritage, a yeah. bit of tone. That's what we're after. What's not to like. So there we are. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, put them in the comments section below. I will put a link in the comments section below so that you can see all the models in all their glory and all the colours and everything on just the Anderson's to website. Irritate and annoy every single person on the internet. <laughs> I've been Rob Chapman. Really just done that. And I'll be spending the next half an hour trying to get a flex from out
Oh wow, well, that's true. Right away. First time you're a pro. That's the technique, you bro. Are a pro. <laughs>